And welcome back everybody, it's time to talk about Eco. Now this is an early access MMO style game that's taken up a ton of my time this week. Basically, Eco epitomizes the feeling of potential in its current state. It's a game and idea that screams possibilities, but one in which is both muddied by its current alpha state, but also because of how convoluted many of its mechanics and systems are. Looking at it right now, I'm rather unsure of its future just because of this. You know, it could be the next big thing in Minecraft inspired sandboxes or just another in a long range of failures. It is an incredibly interesting concept though. It's a sandbox slash survival style multiplayer game that is built around the ecology of a world. A world that is built with many interconnecting systems like the environment and animals and resources that the player needs to be aware of and manage correctly. It's a system that is built around the cause and effect and having to be mindful of your impact on the world, which is not something we often see in these types of games. Trees need to be cut and slowly grow back over time. Animals can be wiped out entirely, which means you have to take care when hunting and leave a certain amount of animals to repopulate the world. Terraform too much in an area and both the flora and the fauna is unlikely to return as well. Unsurprisingly, food plays a huge part in this kind of survival gameplay with finding growing and cooking food for yourself and it is rather detailed with how you need to aim towards you know a balanced diet between carbs and protein and fat and nutrients because of this you need to explore and gather the necessary ingredients to maintain that balance with each ingredient and meal varying dramatically at times it can be a little fiddly to figure this out but it is an interesting system that encourages you to explore the world and experiment with different food items this brings me to the research style progression system that you open up with points to allow new actions and abilities to interact with the world, as well as more crafting styles and options. The better balanced your nutrition is and the more upgraded those items you're consuming are, the faster this progresses. And this is the kind of interconnected systems I'm talking about. There are long progression systems there for, you know, cooking as well as farming mining and masonry and even large scientific endeavors like creating refineries and lasers various methods for creating power and you're even able to implement a complete manufacturing system to refine materials and create items there is even a civics style system there involved with research that allows you to unlock a server-wide style of government with laws and edicts as well as systems for voting over these it looks like a simple system to start but it hides a rather large scope from where you start to where you're able to go, from a simple Neanderthal banging rocks in the beginning to a refined scientist and community member. The amount of elements to uncover in research is a little daunting at first, and this is made worse by the sometimes ludicrous skill point requirements later on. Hundreds of points needed for a single skill when you might only be getting a couple of dozen in the beginning And that's with a perfectly balanced nutrition This means you have gameplay around waiting or coming back to the game in a day or two after you've got those skill points You need of course you still need to come back as that Hunger and the nutrition scale does keep going down as the server keeps playing As you get better food types though, this does increase and dramatically, but still, when you are looking at those skill requirements for one aspect, when there are a plethora of other options, all seemingly fielding these same ridiculous skill point requirements, the process seems unmanageable at first. But of course, this brings me to the rather divisive part of Eco's design in that the systems and mechanics are all built around the idea of a server community banding together to accomplish these tasks with people choosing to specialize in these various tasks needed and sharing their abilities and talents around accordingly to get the most impact and improvement you've got that original researching of elements but also putting those points to refine better and 
maximize and optimize those processes that you individually decide to specialize in. To help this idea of community progress as well, after researching an item, you can actually build a little skill book. This requires you know, a decent amount of materials based on that profession, but once crafted, you are able to create an infinite number of little skill scrolls that allow anyone else coming to gain access to that research as well without that skill point requirement. It's a decent principle and one that may allow it to be a It's a decent principle and one that may allow it to be an amazing teaching program they aim for. It's a decent principle and one that I think will make an amazing teaching program like they've aimed for. But also at the same time to create these strong, vibrant communities around it. Unfortunately, this specialization leads to there being a lot of grind with systems that feel way too restricted because of how they minimize the impact and usefulness of the individual player. The level of materials is often rather high, especially when you go further into the crafting systems. Mining and moving these materials in particular is intentionally unwieldy with only being able to pick up one stone or metal material at a time when working. There is a workaround with placing them into a crate or cart first, then being able to pick up a stack of 10, but it would have been far easier to be able to pick up to your maximum directly. And then there is the element of skill type progression that I think could have gone this way as well with being able to pick up and hold and carry more of these items if you do specialize rather than just optimizing that process. The overarching goal behind this game is to stop an impending meteor from destroying your planet. And to do this within a time frame, you need to work together as a community to gather, craft, research, and build. Boldly crafting where no one has crafted before. <laughs> but it's an overarching goal that doesn't exactly feel so threatening at times. Just a distant threat that is so far removed from the general gameplay, at least in the beginning, to be meaningless and this feeling only gets stronger the more you play. It's the sandbox nature of the experience that invokes those feelings of creative freedom, yet a design that runs counter that. And you can see the dissidence this creates with how wildly some servers can differ. I've experienced both sides of this equation so far with the main unofficial server step life being this wonderful collaborative journey of people working together helping where they can with chests and crafting benches for public use a library built with lots of skill books and scrolls for people to use to get their abilities and progression up to where the server is and even server-wide and community projects like building these large house structures roads that expand across the globe full scale industrialization and it's just the general design of these communities that really matters signs pointing you in the right direction completely open planning with crafting benches and houses to allow ease of use and ease of understanding and then there is the other side houses boarded up and inaccessible to others crafting benches inside going unused resources being hoarded for your own personal use and no one else's personal plots taking up areas of rich resources for personal use as well research being a singular affair that feels overwhelming and honestly like you are making no progress at all this of course is because no one else there is sharing their research as well sharing those skill books and scrolls or making it at least accessible for others to get there or at least known where to get them. You have small group clicks that neither interact or help others around them and what seems like open hostility at times. It's strange, but a product of this weird social environment that gets created sometimes. The later you progress as a server, the more you do have to work together as well. With the effects of unchecked player actions in industry, progress having a greater effect on the world. You can have pollution impacting the entirety of the world, which can and will doom it. It's a concept that when it works, it works for an amazing community and you can see 
that wonderful experience it fosters. Or it can be a frustrating failure. But this is of course left up to the quality of the players. This isn't the only issue at the moment either as it is a rather early alpha state right now so there are various bugs to worry about. Farming is an impossibility right now with how unlikely a plant is to actually grow when it's planted, even in the right area and climate. Then there are the cart physics that are so unbelievably broken as to be unusable. Performance is unbelievably bad right now with FPS issues as well as constant pop-in and frame rate issues with objects even in your immediate surroundings disappearing or not loading properly. And then there is the ping I get to even servers in Australia that is close to 200. I haven't found any workaround for this yet and every other multiplayer game is fine but I don't know I'm not sure what sort of coding fuck up is there right now but it makes it for a much poorer experience for me. But even through all of these issues and many more right now, I can't help but see a glimmer of potential within and it keeps you playing, progressing and learning more about this game and its systems. It's a potential I very much hope is realized in the future. Thanks everybody and I will see you next time.